three and a half weeks ago, I lost my wife. And she'd been after me to record this. And I told her, I said, honey, people will make fun of me. They'll laugh at me. They'll think I'm lying. They'll mock me just like they used to. May the 1st, 1985, I woke up and my pillow was covered in blood. My right ear was bleeding. May the 2nd, 1985, about 8.15 in the morning, I went in for emergency surgery. I had a huge tumor in my middle inner ear. They went in and they cut the tumor out and then they grafted me a new eardrum. During that surgery, my heart stopped and I was clinically dead for 38 minutes. And that's what this is about. A staircase appeared to my right of where I was laying. And there was angels on that staircase on both sides and a figure came down the center of it. And that figure was Jesus. He looked a little bit like a picture that we had in our church, but his hair wasn't long. It was, it was very short and curly. And his beard was, was very well trimmed and just nice looking, nice looking man he was. And I knew it was Jesus because I could see the scars in his hands when he took me by my hand and lifted me up out of my body. And we started walking up these stairs and it seemed like every, stair we, every step we took, the faster we went. And before I realized that we were moving faster than anything I'd ever seen. And I was flying over this meadow, this, this green meadow, and I could smell honey and fresh bread so strong. And I was taken and stood in front of this big gold door. Now the door was so wide that I could look to either side and I could not see the sides of it. Standing on the floor or the ground or whatever it was I was standing on, it was gold, I can tell you that. But it was transparent, so pure it was transparent, that when I looked up, I could not see the top of the door. From standing on the ground, looking straight up, I could not see the top of this door. But there was a handle on it. And I grabbed this handle and I tried to pull it and open it. And I couldn't open it. It was too heavy. I couldn't move it. Well, all of a sudden, this door just flew open by itself. And this intense light poured out of it. The light was so bright that when I covered my face and I buried my face against what my feet were standing on and tried to just shield myself from this light and this pain that the light brought that I could still see the light. It was like a, it, it, I could see the bones in my hands kind of light. Well, I heard these words, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I have never known you. And in an instant, an angel on my left and an angel on my right jerked me up out of there, and the peace that I was feeling while I was there was just destroyed. And they carried me across this dark chasm and just dropped me. And I fell for what seemed like an extremely long time. And then I hit. And when I hit, there was a searing pain in my body. It was like every bone in my body broke, but not a single one did. It was dark, but you could see. The stench was so bad, it smelled like rotten flesh. That buzzards that ate on the side of the road. Some of them, it was smelled that the buzzard wouldn't even eat it. And the heat and the fire was so hot that it was transparent it was invisible you couldn't see the fire but the hot the fire was so hot that you could feel the skin bubbling up and running off of you and your flesh just melting and hanging off your bones but when you look down there wasn't nothing wrong with it so it could keep burning and you could keep feeling that sensation all the time and there was no relief from it and I wasn't standing on the floor. It was people, other people. And these people were clawing at my legs and biting at my feet and my legs trying to pull themselves out from under the people that was on top of them. And the whole time, people are being dropped in from above. It's like nobody's making it into heaven. I know that there were some folks getting in, but not nearly as many as you'd think. Because there was a lot of them going into hell. And then all of a sudden, every single time 
that God had presented Himself to me in church. That I had felt the Holy Spirit tug at my heart and try to draw me up to the front to the altar to get saved. Every single time the Lord had dealt with me started playing like a bad movie. Over and over and over in my head, I could see it over and over again. I could hear the Holy Spirit calling me. And I knew that all I had to have done was just said yes and went and prayed, and I wouldn't be in this awful place that I was in now. Burning, being bit and clawed and scratched in a stank. Well, I made my way over to the side and I tried to climb out, and the walls were real high. And it was like it was moving. But when I finally made it to the wall and I got up away from the things, the, the people that were biting and clawing at me, I, I didn't have that going on at the moment. The heat was still there, but then all of a sudden this demon, this huge, huge demon, the thing must have been 30 feet tall, cracked me with a whip, crossed my back, felt like it was going to split me in half. And knocked me right off the wall, right back down into the pit. And folks, it was awful. It's screaming and crying and biting and clawing and burning and seeing this bad movie in my head. And then all of a sudden I could hear it off in the distance. I could hear a voice. Father, please let me go get him. Let me go get him. I know He'll change, Father. I know He'll do what we need Him to do. God, just please, Father, let me go get Him. And then all of a sudden, this light started coming from toward heaven. Because you can see heaven from hell. You can see it. You can see what you're missing out on, which makes it that much worse. And this light starts coming from heaven, and I mean it's coming at a quick pace. And just before I went under, I raised my hand up, and Jesus pulled me out of that pit. Demons were screaming. Uh, the, the souls that were there in hell was screaming. Everything was screaming and getting out of his way because, well, he's the boss. And he took me up and over that green meadow we went again. We was moving faster and faster and faster. Back the same way we come. We got back down to the operating room and I was standing there beside Jesus and I could see the doctors doing CPR on my body. Jesus picked me up. And I could feel so much love. So much love from Him. And He laid me down on myself. Putting me back in my body, I guess. And He kissed me on my cheek. And He told me, Go tell the world what you have seen. Tell everybody who will listen. Now go and do our Father's work. Go. Two days later, I woke up in intensive care unit. Three and a half weeks ago, I lost my wife. And she'd been after me to record this. And I told her, I said, honey, people will make fun of me. They'll laugh at me. They'll think I'm lying. They'll mock me just like they used to. And she said, it don't matter what they do. You need to record this. You need to put it on YouTube and get it over to Facebook and every other place you can put it. So you can warn folks about what's coming. You can tell people that heaven and hell is real. They need to know. I didn't do it for her, but I'm doing it now. Because she's in heaven right now. And in order for me to get there, I got to do what God asked me to do. And that was tell everybody. So that's what I'm doing. Folks, don't think for a second that heaven and hell ain't real, because it is. There's very real consequences for the things that you do while you're here on this planet. But I'm telling you, when your name is called... And you hear those words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. You can't say you wasn't warned if you watched this video, because you were. And you're going to find out exactly what I'm telling you is waiting for you in hell. It's real simple. It's not complicated. Confess your sins to God. Ask for forgiveness through the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ. And then get up and live by the example that Jesus set for us.